Good morning, Commissioners, Good Chief morning. Mathis, City Attorney, Ms. Iniguez, Eric Scott, Fire Captain, Paramedic, Public Information Officer. Uh, this morning, we are going to recognize the LAFD Arson Counterterrorism House of Worship Task Force for a lengthy and collaborative investigation in a series of church vandalisms in the Los Angeles region since 2016. So it's important to know that this was the first time ever that multiple agencies outside the city of Los Angeles were included in resulting in this formation of the first ever LAFD interagency House of Worship Arson Task Force. And they led a unified and intensive investigation, which ultimately led to the capture and conviction of the criminal. So at this point, we'd like to ask the following members to please stand near the podium. Battalion Chief Michael Castillo, Captains Scott LaRue, Tim Holleran, Investigators Mario Newt, Gus Gaeta with canine Investigator Blue, Arson Forensic Photographer Harry Garvin, and the three Deputy District Attorneys, Joy Roberts, Holly Hapron, and Rachel Bowers. And first to give a little bit of history behind all of this. In 1996, we formed the House of Worship Arson Task Force. And that was comprised of your LAFD, LAPD, ATF, and FBI. And they investigate all arson and hate crimes that related uh, with fires that occur in a house of worship within the city of Los Angeles. But in 2016 is when a series of approximately 30 vandalisms uh, began in the Los Angeles region, and that consisted of spray painting these churches, breaking statues, damaging religious artifacts, etc. But then in January of 2018, the suspect began damaging the churches utilizing fire, which uh, it was his choice of weapon of destruction then. And the first church that was damaged by fire was in Pasadena, but shortly thereafter, the Resurrection Church that serves the community of, least, of East Los Angeles was hit. Now, that church was a fabric of the community since 1923. So the act of arson really strikes a much deeper chord. Many view this uh, house of worship as a safe area where violence cannot affect them. So arson destroys more than the building itself. It can devastate that community that really depends on the church, and that's no matter what faith. So the Resurrection Church fire really was a turning point. This uh, criminal had been vandalizing churches now for a couple years, and there was two key points. He escalated again using fire now as his weapon, and two, he targeted churches in Los Angeles, which is their territory. So immediately after that resur Resurrection Church fire, your LAFD activated the task force with a modification this time. They assembled over 25 personnel from multiple agencies and started to include them in the task force. And so they really had a heck of a posse with them, as you could imagine. It was LAPD, Glendale Police and Fire, Pasadena Police and Fire, ATF, uh, LA Sheriff's, FBI, and the Los Angeles County District Attorney's Office. And they were all supervised by the competent section captain, Scott LaRue. So how do they actually catch this elusive criminal? Well, during analysis of surveillance video from several incidents, these investigators ID'd a vehicle that was seen at a previous uh, scene. So now they're armed with a partial license plate as well as a vehicle description, and they began to canvas the area where one of the churches had been vandalized, and they ID'd the vehicle that belonged to the suspect. Mm. They also evaluated the suspect's social media postings, and there they were able to see that it contained similar religious statements that was found at the site of these churches that were vandalized. So the investigators set up 24-hour surveillance on that vehicle, and then in January 25th of 2018, that suspect was caught vandalizing the church in the central Los Angeles area and immediately was arrested. Uh, it's important to state, too, that the surveillance assistance that was provided from LAPD was uh, very critical to capturing of the suspect which was 25-year-old Christian Garcia. He was taken into custody, and the investigation revealed that he was linked to approximately 30 incidents 
in the cities of Fresno, Norco, Chico, and the city and county of Los Angeles. And the total estimated damages were nearly $800,000. So the suspect uh, ultimately confessed to committing the crimes during a lengthy interview by the LAFD and Pasadena fire arson investigators. Then in January 29th, uh, 2018, these three uh, deputy district attorneys filed 22 charges of vandalism, arson, and commercial burglary along with specific hate crime allegations. And so finally, in February of 2019, the defendant was found guilty and was sentenced to potentially 40 years in a state mental institution. Mm -hmm. And so we'd like to briefly read one of the certificates. On behalf of the members of the Los Angeles Fire Department, I extend our sincere gratitude uh, appreciation for you for the diligent leadership during the investigation of church fires during January 2018 with the LAFD Interagency House of Worship Arson Task Force. Your leadership was demonstrated in coordinating and managing the LAFD members participating in the task force. Your contributions were instrumental in making an arrest and your commitment is also a tremendous reflection of the Los Angeles Fire Department that gained justice for the cities of Los Angeles, presented this 19th day of February, 2019. And now we'd like to ask Chief Deputy Fred Mathis. Let's give them a round of applause. Uh, good morning. Um, I don't think there's anything more sacred in the city of Los Angeles than the uh, the churches, the temples, and the other places of house of worship. Um, they certainly are, are sacred to the people in the neighborhoods there. Um, and one of the things about this event was the collaboration of different agencies that don't normally work together, but work together very efficiently and very determined to thwart this, this threat. So on behalf of uh, Fire Chief Terrazas and the command staff, I want to congratulate the uh, task force members here for your determination and uh, for thwarting this, this threat. And uh, very well job, good job, well done. Appreciate it. And now I'd like to turn it over to Chief Castillo. Thank you, Chief. Good morning. Good morning. My name is Mike Castillo, Battalion Chief from the Commander of the Arson Counterterrorism Section. And Madam President, Commissioners, Chief Mathis, City Attorney, and distinguished guests. On behalf of the members of the House of Worship Arson Task Force, I'd like to thank you for recognizing their efforts and the work of the task force members. Uh, although there are many, many people involved, I'd like to specifically uh, recognize a few. As mentioned earlier in 96, the House of Worship Task Force was created by the LEFD, and at that time it was basically LEFD arson, LEPD, and NATF. Um, we recognize this as a, a large-scale uh, global incident, and uh, thanks to Captain LaRue, he pulled us all together. It was his decision to make us an interagency task force, and it's, uh, it worked out well, and it's a model that will follow in the future. Investigator Les Wilkerson, who unfortunately could not be here today, his actions were instrumental in identifying the suspect. He actually had a partial license plate. Uh, he went to dealer, auto dealers throughout the uh, city with a partial description of the car and determined what type of car it was. And he was instrumental with LAPD in setting up the surveillance, which ultimately caught the suspect. Uh, investigator Mario Newt uh, is our primary investigator for our churches, our house of worship. He rolls out to every incident, either accidental or deliberate, uh, that we have at uh, house of worships. Uh, investigator Gaeta and K9 Blue were actually the persons who discovered the graffiti uh, at the Resurrection Church that actually linked the suspect to other church fires. Fire investigator Rosa Tufts, who unfortunately uh, could not be here due to family emergency, um, she's been embedded with the LAPD for over seven years. Um, she's the reason why we have such a fantastic working relationship with LAPD, um, Major Crimes Division, and Criminal Conspiracy Section, who are also were instrumental in, in uh, assisting us. It was a true partnership. Uh, between LAPD and LAFD. Um, Rosa will be retiring this April. As you're aware, she was uh, recently recognized as a firefighter of the year, and she, I'm sorry she can't be here today, um, but she was instrumental also uh, in this investigation. Our forensic photographer, Harry Garvin, uh, who rolls out to all of our incidents. Uh, you know what they say about a picture is worth a thousand words. Uh, Harry's pictures is a dedication to assisting our investigators documenting are critical in the prosecution. And also special thanks to Deputy District Attorneys uh, Holly Harpum, 
Joy Roberts and Rachel Bowers, who unfortunately couldn't be here. She's actually in jury duty right now. You know, the DAs put in 15-hour days. We have a, uh, a unique set of DAs. They actually roll out to our incidents now. Um, they're there firsthand right alongside the investigators, guiding us, giving us advice, and it ultimately helps in the prosecution. Um, so their hard work and partnership resulted in a successful prosecution. And I'd also like to acknowledge and thank Los Angeles County District Attorney Jackie Lacey uh, for being here today. <laughs> Lastly, the task force was nominated and will be receiving the prestigious 2019 Anti-Defamation League Sherwood Award for Combating Hate and Bigotry. This is a uh, award that's uh, awarded once a year to uh, law enforcement uh, for specific incidents and um, LAPD uh, put us in for the award and we received it. And we'll be we're receiving that on March 12, 2019 at the Getty Center. Thank you very much. Thank you. Mm -hmm. yeah. Madam President, yeah. since we have the district attorney here, could we allow her to say yeah, something? I think that would be appropriate. Um, so, uh, good morning, Commission. Good morning, uh, Ms. Uh, Commissioner Woods Gray, and to all of you. Um, I'm here because I'm just really um, basking in the glow of the uh, of this team. Uh, I know a little bit about this work. I was a hate crimes prosecutor back in 1998. Uh, these cases are difficult to prove, but they're very important because I often say you should be safe in the house of worship. You should be safe in a school, right? And so when something like this happens, of course, it shakes everybody in the community. Uh, the work, as described um, uh, by uh, Mike Castillo, is, is amazing. And uh, just looking at this group, realizing it's 25 people and a dog, uh, illustrates how much it takes to really get these cases together. They're not easy to prove. But I also uh, would, would be remiss in not saying uh, that it's obvious um, since the defendant was sentenced to four, possibly 40 years in a mental institution that we've got to do something to a proactively address mental health, right? Uh, we've got to get in there before people uh, destroy or burn, um, you know, houses of worship. And it's just another example of a wake-up call to all of us that this is not an issue. Mental health is not an issue that we should ignore, that we've got to be proactive. And if we could just reach people before the police get involved, uh, it would really serve our community well. But once again, I'm very, very proud of this commission. I'm proud of my deputy district attorneys. I know each one of them personally. They're hardworking uh, folks. They're hardworking prosecutors, very committed and dedicated to the profession. And I didn't even know they were doing this work. I knew they were working hard, but I'm extremely proud of them. And I want to say congratulations to all the commission. And thank you for, for recognizing this work. It is important. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you for thank coming. You.